Now, one of the most common mistakes I see in the industry is that organizations tend to shoot for data science and AI before they even sort out uh, steps one, two, and three, which is the infrastructure architecture, the database, and the data analytics. What's up, you data friends? It's Yanis here, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the data scientist team structure, we're going to talk about where do data scientists fit in this structure and we're also going to talk about the different kind of crossovers that data scientists have with different data teams. By the way, if you're new to my channel and you're passionate about data analytics and data science, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel as I will be uploading regularly data science informative videos and data science tutorials. Right, this pyramid over here now shows the data infrastructure of a business in an ideal world. And what this means is that not all organizations are gonna follow exactly the same data infrastructure as this one, just because every organization is different to each other, However, this is like an average data infrastructure that organizations tend to follow. And data infrastructures in organizations are dependent on two things, the size of the business and the resource or money that the business is putting into their data infrastructure, if they are a data-driven organization or not, for example. Right, starting from the bottom of the pyramid, which is the foundations, we have the data infrastructure architecture team. And this team consists of infrastructure architects or managers, solution architects, enterprise architects, software engineers, and data engineers. Some of their main responsibilities now is building and managing on-prem and cloud solutions. So this is going to be Azure, AWS, GCP, or any other cloud uh, solution and building data lakes. This step now is quite big in 2020 as the majority of the organizations, if not all of the organizations, have actually started migrating their data from on-prem solutions to the cloud. Another responsibility they have is to manage connections and APIs, data collection, movement, transformation, and storing. Now these tasks over here have a lot of crossover with the database management team, which we will discuss in a second. Additionally, they have to manage and create automated and reliable data flow, make sure that the data is flowing correctly in the organization. Also, they have to manage security and compliance. They have to monitor who is seeing what in the databases or in the reports. And lastly, they have to manage the data governance and the data lifecycle. Now, regarding this last step here, the data governance and the data lifecycle, which is getting a lot of popularity in the data world these days, I'm not entirely sure if you should be in here or outside the pyramid overlooking all the data infrastructure. So if you have more knowledge, please let us know in the comments below. Right, moving on to the next layer of the pyramid, we have the database management team, which consists of database managers and database administrators. What these people do now is that they take this nice, a clean, reliable data provided by the data infrastructure architecture team and they clean it, sort it, index it, transform it, and store it into several different databases, tables, and views so that the next team, which is the data analytics team, is able to start using it straight away. Right, the next team now is the data analytics team, which consists of data analytics managers, data analysts, and data consultants. Their main priority is to create an automated reporting environment for the business. So they have to manage analytics, create new reports, analyze metrics, analyze key principal indicators, KPIs, create new visualizations, create new business intelligence tools, and provide insights back to the business. Right, the next team now is the data science team, which consists of data scientists, machine learning engineer, machine learning evangelist, and senior data consultants. So this team is primarily focused on machine learning, algorithms, modeling or custom modeling, predictive analytics, A-B testing, and segmentation. And at the top of the pyramid, we have AI, artificial intelligence, which is more of a team effort versus an individual team. And this is because you're going to need the involvement of all teams in order to achieve AI. 
So you're probably going to need a data engineer and a database manager and an analytics manager and a data scientist or a machine learning engineer in order to achieve AI. And the main priority of AI is automated decision making where uh, no human interaction or minimal human interaction is needed in order to take decisions. Now, one of the most common mistakes I see in the industry is that organizations tend to shoot for data science and AI before they even sort out uh, steps one, two, and three, which is the infrastructure architecture, the database, and the data analytics. And these kind of projects, they are only destined to fail, or they can maybe achieve some short term gains, but eventually they're going to realize that if they don't have layers one, two, and three in place, they cannot make these kind of projects fly. And what I just said leads us to the second point of this video, which is where do data scientists fit in organizations? Now, if the organization is small, they are probably or definitely not going to have layers one, two, and three in place. So if they do employ a data scientist, then this data scientist is going to have to be involved or actually do layers one, two, and three himself. So on a smaller scale, of course, but the data scientist is still going to have to do all the data gathering, data movement, data transformation, then clean, sorting, indexing, and saving the data in tables and views. Then probably some analytics because the business is going to need simple analytics before they move into data science. And then the data scientist is going to be doing machine learning, modeling, predicting analytics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then if the size of the organization is medium, then the organization is probably going to have layers one and two in place. However, if they still shoot for predictive analytics, again, it's not the best choice because then you leave data analytics behind. So someone has to do the simple analytics the automated reporting, the KPI reporting, the visualizations for the business before you move into data science. So again, the data scientist is probably going to be more involved into analytics versus uh, actual data science. And then large organizations are probably going to have dedicated departments running one, two, and three. So the data scientist is going to have more time to focus on the responsibilities of the data science team and also run or do some AI. Now, I'm not saying that small and medium organizations cannot have data science and AI. However, if you want to be realistic, when it comes to deploying machine learning models and AI, you would 100% need data infrastructure and database management people before you deploy your models. So again, if you don't have layers one and two and three, you cannot really achieve and deploy AI models. Or to put it differently, maybe you can deploy on small and medium organizations, However, it's going to be on a much smaller scale. Uh, if you have experience in small and medium organizations and deploying AI and ML, please let us know in the comments below. Right, some examples now of crossovers. The first one I have is between the data science team and the data analytics team. So when the data scientist is on the problem formulation phase, so the first step I have over here, by the way, I'm going to have links in the description of my previous videos, which is uh, what is data science, what does a data scientist do, and the time spent on different tasks. Uh, additionally, I will be doing uh, the data science skills and tools used. So make sure you click that like button and enable notifications so you know when my next videos are going to be available. Anyway, sorry for the pause. Going back, when the data scientist is on the problem identification or problem formulation phase, a good way to start is by investigating the existing dashboards that the data analytics team has. So as a data scientist, you're going to sit down with the data analyst and be like, this is my problem and the uh, revenue is going down. Can you show me all the dashboards you have about the revenue? And then you can investigate 
uh, the products, the categories, anything related to revenue in existing dashboards. And then you can actually formulate what the problem is and move on into doing more advanced stuff as a data scientist. So maybe uh, ML or algorithms or modeling the problem or predicting uh, the revenue or predicting the churn, etc., etc. The next example of crossover we have is between the data science team and the database management team. And an example is when the data scientist is on the data gathering phase. So this one over here, and you, the data scientists, have identified new data or new data sources that you need to fit into the database so you can actually use them for your model. So you're going to have to sit down with this team, the database management team, and talk about where uh, they're going to save that data and how, and then how you can connect to that data and use that data for your analysis or for your models. The last crossover example we have is between the data science team and the data infrastructure architecture team. So one example is when the data scientist is on the step where you're happy with your model, the business is happy with your model, and you actually have to deploy your model. So you're going to have to sit down with the infrastructure team and talk about things. Where are you going to deploy your model in, in the cloud, in which cluster, how much GPU you're going to need, how much power you're going to need. Uh, do you want to automate this process everywhere, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things I have just mentioned, you need to sit down with the data infrastructure architecture team and speak about how you're going to actually achieve them and deploy your model to the business. Right. This is the end of this video. And I hope you guys gain a very good understanding of how the data science team structure works and how different data teams work together. If you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click that like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you're a data scientist and you have different experience or there is something you want, you want to add or you agree or you don't agree with, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you on the next video.